thank you for having me here. Uh, this is my second state of the map. I've been to Girona, but only as a listener. Um, okay, I'm employed by uh, um, Technische Universität Berlin uh, in the Department of Transportation, um, where I appeared with a previous interest in OpenStreetMap. And um, this, uh, this, this presentation is a result of this previous interest and, uh, and um, trying to use more open data in our traffic simulation projects. Now, traffic simulation in this context means to predict the reaction of a traffic system to some policy measure, like closing a road or improving the speed of public transport or things like that. And a traffic system includes users, and the desired outcome is that people are better off than before by some measure of utility. Um, so our approach is to use a multi-agent simulation to include the behavior of individual users and how this behavior changes with um, changes to the traffic system. Our simulation consists of two layers, which we call the physical layer and the mental layer. On the physical layer, the participants of the traffic system concurrently execute their travel plans, uh, competing for the system capacity, meaning being caught in congestion behind each other. Mm. The mental layer means that uh, the, the people evaluate the outcome of their daily plan, the success of their plan, so to say, uh, do I arrive in time? my workplace, do I miss buses? Mm. And then they consider their options, like switching to a different means of transport or perhaps going to work later to avoid congestion. And then they change some aspect of their behavior, and then we, we, we iterate that and see if, 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 if some steady state arises. That's basically our simulation model. Um, so the kind of policy measure we try to look at is, for example, introducing an evening toll. That's already an, an, an advanced measure. The more, the, the simpler things you could evaluate is just what happens if I remove this bridge. Is the system very sensitive to the, uh, to, to the usability of this or that road segment? And some possible reactions the, uh, the, the agents can take is use a different, a different route to avoid the evening toll, travel earlier to avoid the evening toll, or switch to public transport to avoid the evening toll. And, um, since, since we use we use individual people as as our as our model, a population of individual people, we can then disaggregate uh, the, the, these these reactions and see where the, where do the people live who benefit most from this measure, or uh, what, what is the, what is their income class, things like that. Okay, now to describe this in more detail, this is the this is basically the. The, the, mm, the road system part of the physical layer of our model. It's called the queuing model. It was developed by uh, Garfron in 1998. Um, this is a link, and vehicles enter the link and move to the end of the link at what we call free speed, which is an attribute of the link. Depends on road characteristics. In each time step, the queue, the link, is served according to another attribute, which is flow capacity. This is the number of cars which can leave the link in each time step. Also depends on the road characteristics, like number of lanes and um, perhaps the legal, uh, the legal speed limit. And if the number of cars on one link, uh, if, if this physical queue is longer than the link itself, it spills back and no more vehicles can enter. And this aspect of the model is important to, uh, to, to pick up this, this wave characteristics of, uh, of, of congestion. And uh, the, the advantage of this model compared to, to a cell-based model, cellular automaton, cars move into the next cell uh, if it's free and if it's not, they don't. Um, is that in this model you only have to touch each link every time step uh, as opposed to every cell each time step. Okay, now this of course requires a network model and we require for each link the following attributes. It's length for the storage capacity which I mentioned, it's free speed velocity and it's flow capacity and if it's one way or not but that's mostly easy. So 
when we do our studies, we often get a kind of planning network from some from some local authority, and they often um, they often have these numbers for for every road segment because they are common they, they are uh, common quantities in, in transportation. And of course, what we do and what everybody seems to be doing who uh, who does routing based on OpenStreetMap is we uh, we map highway tags to link attributes based on based on transportation handbooks and on experience. Uh, I'm, I'm open to suggestions <laughs> how to do this better. Um, and we we came up with this with, with a table of which this is an ex, an excerpt. Um, we we take the legal speed limit as a as a as a benchmark and then. Uh, then adjust this based on based on experience because, uh, for example, on 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 residential uh, on residential streets we find that uh, very often people exceed the legal speed limit. But on the other hand, uh, on uh, unsignaled on unsignaled nodes where there's this uh, right before left regime which we have in Germany, I think it's it's different locally, um, of, often leads to, uh, to to decrease that again. So these we have these, these these factors by which we augment the legal speed limit to to estimate the the free speed and uh, well they are based on, on, on rules of thumbs really. Mm. And uh, the flow capacity is based is based on on, on, on handbooks. There are transportation handbooks which uh, which which which, which contain estimates or, or guidelines for, for these kinds of figures. Mm. Okay, that about the physical, the physical layer, the supply side of the transportation network. Now, the second thing we need is um, is the synthetic population, and this is much more difficult. Mm. For our model, we need a whole set of people, a one percent sample, a ten percent sample, mm. which in some way represent the real population of our study area. And for our disaggregated model, we need them equipped with individual travel diaries. And we generate this from surveys, which are often available, but more often they're not available. So the kind of data we need are this. Uh, person lives, lives here, works there, goes to lunch up there, on his way back or her way back, goes shopping over there, visits a doctor and goes home. This is, uh, this is the kind of inf information we need with times, of course, and with the means of transport chosen for each, for each trip. We need this. This has to come from somewhere. Otherwise, we can't do anything. And um, yeah, next time it looks like this. We have a person with a designator and with a plan. And um, yeah. So, yeah, we need this kind of, sur of survey where people volunteer complete travel diaries, but sometimes we have to fall back to a commuter matrix. This is a commuter matrix. Mm. It says how many people commute from the city of Potsdam to the city of Berlin each day, or how many people commute from locations within Potsdam to, look to other locations within Potsdam on a typical given work day. And well, this is problematic because the, the commuter share of traffic is decreasing. More than half of the trips are leisure trips now. And, um, and also because, um, because the, mm, well, sometimes, sometimes this, uh, you get the commuter matrix in a symmetrical way. So you can't really tell who, who, com who commutes from Berlin to Potsdam and who commutes from Potsdam to Berlin. This data is sometimes missing. And of course, you can't, uh, you can't get the, the morning peaks and evening peaks correctly if you don't know the direction of the commuting. But um, OpenStreetMap helps here if mm, the, the people we get the commuter matrix from use designators which, uh, which, are contained in, which are contained in OSM, which is often the case. There's a numbering scheme for administrative areas in Germany. And often we get this matrix and can look up polygons in OSM. And, and then we, uh, we distribute, we, we, we draw home and work locations from, from these polygons and generate our synthetic population that way from a commuter matrix. This is often the best we can do. 
Of course, this is problematic. So uh, we would benefit from from more coverage of of, of, of land use attributes or, or uh, pop, pop, population attributes or even buildings, perhaps. 